This is the Uptick Newswire Stock Day Podcast, sponsored by InvestorsHangout.com and Equities.com. Subscribe to us on iTunes and YouTube to stay up to date on penny stock news and interviews, public information on OTC, pink sheets, and microcap stocks from around the world with your host, Everett Jolly. On today's show, I'm bringing back a returning guest. They were on my show back in June. We're talking about Ethema Health Corporation, the trade on the OTCQB under the ticker symbol GRST. And with us today is the CEO and chairman of the company, Sean Leon. Sean, welcome back to the show. Well, thanks for having me back. You know, give my listeners a little bit about statement of yourself and your company, and then I want to get into the Q&A. Yeah, we've been in the addiction treatment business for uh, about eight years now. We started in Canada. Uh, We operated a best-in-class treatment center in Canada. Uh, We wanted to expand into the U.S., and in 2017, we sold the uh, Canadian business and uh, started the expansion into the U.S. business, into the U.S. um, with a facility in Florida, Delray Beach, Florida, and we are now expanding into a much larger facility in West Palm Beach, Florida. Well, let's talk about that facility. I understand you got about 175 beds. It's uh, about an 80,000 square foot facility on eight and a half acres. Uh, when do you start the new treatment? How is that going? If you can, bring us up to speed. So we've been working on getting this facility since uh, late 2017. Uh, we took uh, possession of the facility in May of 2018. Um, we got the license issued, issued to us at the end of September 2018, and so we are now uh, up and fully operating as of mid-October 2018. Uh, we have all levels of care, detox, intensive inpatient care, residential care, partial hospitalization care, intensive outpatient care, and outpatient care. It's been a long, uh, tough process to get the facility open and, and to uh, get the um, you know staff in place and to get everything uh, going the way we want it. Um, but we're there now, and uh, we see a lot of uh, great uh, treatment days ahead of us. You know, on, on that treatment case, how do you find your, your clientele, or does your clientele find you? We are doing something different uh, with respect to, um, you know, patients and clients and how they find us. You know, many treatment centers operate through referral sources and, you know, uh, advertising on the internet and, and other forms of advertising and marketing. And we've been uh, focusing on going direct to the payer groups, the, uh, the for example, a union group that uh, has a self-directed uh, health care plan. Um, we would deal directly with the union um, or uh, employer assistance programs that are part of an employer group's um, you know management of their health care. We would go directly to the employer assistance program but primarily what we're doing is we're trying to get the groups to recognize us as uh, leaders and uh, best-in-class treatment providers um, with, with great value. And the reason for that is that we provide a very high quality, very high, highly effective care uh, at, a, at a very good and uh, low price, which ultimately gives them value, um, not just for the company not and the cost, but for the client and uh, its effectiveness in getting that client hopefully back to work if they're, you know, in an employer group. Well, I definitely think you're in the right space. And the reason why I say that, there's a huge uh, epidemic of opioids uh, addiction across our country. That being said, how is that affecting your business? Yeah, I mean, I guess to start with, uh, the epidemic has uh, focused a lot of attention on the addiction treatment in general. Uh, uh, Sorry, the addiction treatment business in general. And um, we, um, you know, we like that attention. We like that people are looking uh, to see that, you know, people with addiction problems do need help. Um, It's not something that's hidden in the closet or, you know, hidden from view, so to speak, anymore because it's so front and center. Um, You know, unfortunately, um, the opioid and opiate addictions (coughs) have led people to use illicit drugs that were, laced with fentanyl or carfentanil, which are very powerful um, opioids as well, uh, which can kill and obviously have been killing many uh, um, substance users, and the the death toll has been skyrocketing. It's surpassed car accidents as the number one accidental killer uh, in North America. Um, and so it's it's focused a lot of attention, and, and so we're, we're grateful for that. 
Um, and we're also, you know, um, dealing with uh, a lot of changes to treatment because opioids, um, which are synthetic opiates, um, su- such as Oxycontin, um, are very difficult to uh, withdraw from. So clients that are, um, you know, going through what, what I'd call a traditional treatment program are not really getting the effect that they need. Uh, one of the reasons for that is the insurers, payers are, are, are focused on cost and they're always trying to cut the, the, the stay, the treatment stay as short as possible. Um, and so therefore people are not getting the, the real help they need to um, become so, you know, sober and to stay sober from the use of uh, opioids. Uh, it takes a much longer period of time to withdraw from and get the uh, opioid uh, addiction out of, the, out of the body and out of the uh, system. Um, it's, it's far more difficult and it takes time. So number one, we're fighting uh, time and the time that insurers usually or typically allow for treatment um, that's why we've gone direct to employer groups to say, listen, it's better to get it done right and get it done right the first time or possibly the second time and not to try keep trying this you know, over and over and over again, which is very common in the industry. Um, we also um, are dealing with uh, insurers that are uh, going towards a harm reduction strategy, so they're often saying to a client who fails at treatment, uh, listen, it's better to put you on uh, long-term drug maintenance um, with something like Suboxone or, or other comparable um, medications and instead of getting off of drugs altogether, put them on a sort of safer drug, so to speak, that you know keeps them from dying uh, from the use of illicit drugs. Uh, but this overall is, uh, is a sort of a competing force against actual treatment and, and a, a goal of abstinence for Clients, instead of, of trying to find a, uh, uh, you know, a long-term sobriety, are actually looking at long-term uh, drug maintenance. You know, we don't believe in that. Um, you know, I absolutely think it's, as a last resort, maybe an alternative to dying is, is very reasonable. But if you really want to get to uh, good treatment, you have to change the way you're treating clients, especially with opioid addictions. Absolutely. Um, and it's a longer-term fix, and that's what we do, and we do good, we're do. we very good at it. Are you guys uh, taking a look at any of the uh, cannabinoids? That seems to be the buzzword with CBD products. Can you expand on that a little bit? Yeah, we've been approached by many of the people, and uh, especially our connection to Canada, many of the people that are in the treatment or sort of the cannabis business. Um, They're always looking for a medical use for cannabinoids. Uh, Now that they're legal in Canada, obviously experimentation, research, and development on that type of thing is is ongoing at a much more rapid pace um, because of the now current status of it being a legal substance in Canada. Um, And so we constantly get asked about, you know, using CBDs as a, uh, method to manage uh, the withdrawal or replacement of uh, opioid use, and um, there are definitely uh, proponents thinking that that is a uh, is a uh, good use for cannabinoids. But we ourselves, uh, being a treatment center in Florida, where you know these things aren't legal, we can't conduct that kind of research in the U.S. and we can't re- conduct it in Florida. Um, you know, we're, we're, we think that there may be something there, but uh, that research has to be done, and uh, that will take some time to uh, tell how effective it can be in the replacement of or elimination of uh, the use of, of opioids. Um, and I guess in the, in the same vein, whether people turn from, say, alcohol to cannabis, uh, we're not so sure that that's, uh, you know, what we call treatment. It's just a, you know, again, a replacement may, might be a safer replacement, a less destructive uh, substance to use than alcohol or opioids or cocaine or heroin or, you know, similar types of destructive uh, substances. Uh, but we're not there yet, and uh, we just hope to keep an eye on it very closely and, and see what comes of it. Last year, not last year, but 2017, you guys had 929000 in revenue. That being said, what do you see happening for your business in 2019? Uh, maybe you might be able to give us uh, some, some metrics and, and how you feel about it. 
Yeah, the uh, facility that we have now um, in uh, under operation and uh, generating revenues, uh, you know, in October and November, um, you know, which uh, I could say, be, you know, they're not released publicly yet, but those are uh, above uh, all of last year uh, or will be above all of last year for probably just the fourth quarter. Um but you know the uh, facility at full capacity would generate in the 35 to 40 million dollar revenue range. Um, we don't know that we'll fill the facility uh, for the full year 2019, but we expect to get uh, there fairly quickly. Um, so we can expect significant improvements to uh, revenue, um, uh, even you know probably in the order of 10 times higher than what we were uh, experiencing with our Canadian business. Um, this is a much bigger facility with many more beds and is certainly a much bigger, broader uh, population base to uh, draw from. So revenues in the, in the range of somewhere between you know um, uh, you know eight to ten million, all the way up to maybe twenty million. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, forty million. Um, so it's you know where it is is going to be dependent on the rate that we fill the facility up at. Absolutely. My guest today has been Sean Leon. He is the CEO and President Chairman of uh, Athema Health Corporation. You can find him on the OTCQB under the ticker symbol GRST. Sean, we're running out of time today, but I want to thank you for stopping by. The only thing I ask is that uh, you come on my show a little bit more frequent than you have been. Hopefully you'll come back on in the next 40 or 50 days. You know, give me an update. Give my listeners an update what's going on. I'm very fascinated about your model and the, uh, the space that you guys are in. Thanks, Everett, and we'd be happy to do that. We think things are going to be pretty exciting from here on in and uh, growing rapidly. So uh, certainly we'll have much more to report and a, and a soon, on a much sooner basis in the future. This program is entirely sponsored and produced by Uptick Newswire, LLC, which is responsible for the content. The opinions and information provided on this program are those of the guests and those of the respective companies they represent and do not necessarily reflect those of the staff or management of Uptick Newswire. Uptick Newswire encourages all listeners of this program to do their due diligence and research when determining investment strategies that will work for them or to seek the assistance of an investment professional. The guests of this program may have paid for its distribution and are not directly affiliated with Uptick Newswire or the station.